Anyway, how about you? How are you, Maya? How you been? Oh, um... How could I tell you? joining us. My name is Miracle Mogul and I will be moderating the GIF 2021 panel addressing mental health through film. Joining me today is J.L. Pak from South Korea with his film Georgia and Roselle Almonds here from Guam with her film Good. Roselle and J.L. go ahead and introduce yourselves. Go ahead Roselle. Oh half a day. Um, my name is Roselle Almonds. I am the uh, writer and director of the short film Good. I am a Guam-based filmmaker. I was born and raised here. Um, and Good is a short film that basically shares what um, a person can experience when they are going through depression. Is the basic, basically the short <laughs> version of the film. Um, and the point is to sort of like share like that it can be a very complex experience and that not everybody has like one way of experiencing it and how also how difficult it, be, it can be to talk about those experiences. Um, so yeah, that's me. Uh, Jail, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Jail Park and I'm the uh, director of uh, the short film, Georgia. And I guess how Georgia, what Georgia tackles, I, I think is um, uh, what, something that we don't focus too much on when uh, I guess like a heinous criminal act happens. There's, we always think about the victim, but what happens afterwards, there's a thing called double victimization where uh, a victim could experience the same thing again. And uh, the psychological uh, you know, suffering that happens to people uh, in the vicinity as well. So I guess Georgia uh, focuses on that. Yeah. Does that answer the question? <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's get, let's get started with the questions. Um, why did you choose film as your medium for storytelling? I'll throw this to you first, uh, JL. Oh, me. Uh, it, it's weird because uh, uh, I always, I never, there was never a time uh, that I didn't want to be a filmmaker. I was, I think I was sort of tricked, tricked by my father because like we were growing up in uh, the East Village of Manhattan and my father was a, a dramatist, you know, like my grandfather was a theater director as well. My mom was an actor. So, uh, you know, when people like usually Asian, East Asian families, you know, like your parents would be like, oh, be a doctor, be a lawyer. But my parents, when I said I wanted to like, maybe I want to get into being a cartoonist or like think bigger, work for Pixar, <laughs> be like a like an animation director, you know? I, I think they always like instilled in me like a, like a need for being more ambitious, you know? Uh, but I think, uh, I just went off on a tangent, but I think what my, my dad used to do is he would always walk by like NYU and he's, he would always say, oh, this is, a, this is a college you're gonna go to. Like, you're gonna study film here. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. And then we watch the movies like, oh, you know, you're gonna make movies and yeah, so I don't, I, I think uh, I've always uh, wanted to do films and, I guess uh, why I like the medium of film is like, I guess the cliche answer is it's like the ultimate, ultimate medium because it has music, it has dialogue, it has images, it has, you know, moving images. So like, uh, 
the the potential for the medium is so so vast. So I think uh, uh, you know that's like the cop out answer, but <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah, Rizal. I mean, so yeah, my my experience is kind of similar to yours. I have known that I wanted to do film for a really long time since maybe I was in middle school. Um, and I think it's just because of my writing style. So I've since, ever since I was really young, I was always the type to like sort of like journal and like just kind of make up stories in my head and write them down. But my my writing style isn't like super, it's not very novel like. <laughs> um, and so it's it's a lot of like sort of fill in the blanks with your brain kind of. Um, and like it it's very much based on feeling. And I think that's kind of just the way that I write and like um there was always like a sort of like interest in like bringing it to life because like the way that I write doesn't necessarily mean that you can actually see what I'm seeing in my head and so like so it made only made sense for me to be like okay well the best way to really tell this story is if I show you right and so I think that's kind of what it boils down to is that I've always liked to tell stories and the best way, and I think the most efficient way for me as an artist, I guess, um, to tell those stories is to create films. And like, as I grew up, I just became like more interested in in that sort of aspect of like creating um, and like, you know, watching a movie and just being like, wow, this is really cool. And just being really interested in like, well, how did they do that? Um, kind of, um, I hope, does that answer the question? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that was kind of a roundabout way of answering. <laughs> I answered it I think both, both of it was a good answer um what role do you see film having in a dialogue of mental health I think uh I guess I could just talk I think like uh you know um I think for I think it's like for anything like I think uh film that a medium of art like theater or even like novels like you know I think uh what was that? Uh, what was that saying that people used to say? Like, uh, you know, like politicians uh, tell lies to tell lies, but writers tell lies to tell the truth. So I think, you know, in that sense, I think film, you know, because it has the writing element, and we're 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 focusing on important stories, you know. So I think just exposing the truth about, uh, you know, taboo subjects that people don't want to tackle, especially with mental health, um, like in, even in Korea. Uh, you know, when I was like going through a rough time, you know, like, uh, you know, seven, eight years ago, uh, when I was, when I was trying to seek, uh, you know, counseling, uh, actually, my friends were worried that this would stay in my permanent record. The thing, uh, the stigma in Korea, South Korea is, is pretty bad. Like, if you uh, go to like a mental health facility, or, or you, you seek help, that stays in your record. And like, when you're applying for jobs, uh, People, people, people could see that, and somehow, like, if you're applying for a job, like, like a corporation, uh, that's sort of like a red flag. So they they question that. So I think there's like a negative stigma in many Asian countries, you know, even in Japan and China too. So I think that um, you know, just having films that uh, you know shed light on this, uh, you know, uh, uh, various mental disorders. That the fact that you know, a lot of people are, you know, going through dep depression and they don't even know it, you know, in a lot, many of these countries. And, and, to sh and to say that it's okay, that this isn't someone's fault. It's, uh, it's, it's not like uh, you did something wrong. It wasn't by choice, you know? I think like one of the worst questions you can ask someone that is like, let's say experiencing from, uh, suffering from mental disorder, especially like depression. If you ask that person, why are you depressed? You know, why do you have to be depressed? You know, it's like the worst question. And, uh, you know, my girlfriend in Korea gets that. Like, she's actually uh, suffering from depression and, you know, takes medication. And her mom would ask her that. And it's like, you know, it's such an insensitive question. You know, it's like asking somebody, why do you have this? Why, why, do, why do you have a broken? Uh, why, did, why, did, why, did, why are you born with, like, brown hair? You know, <laughs> like, it's, it's not something that they chose, you know? Result. Yeah, so I totally agree. Um, and like, just to sort of like add on to what you were saying is that, like, I believe very much in the power of representation. And that includes like proper representation of mental health and mental illnesses. And through the years, and like, um, in media, all we have seen from like, in the portrayals of mental health is like, if somebody does something wrong, 
or something like not correct, immediately the response is that person is crazy, right? Yeah. Or the immediately the response to a person who is like not completely like well um, is like that person needs to not like to be locked up or that person needs to like, you know, and like people will say it as an insult, like you need to get seen, you need help or whatever, right? And so like there, it's created this like giant stigma where like now people, right, don't feel like they can get help. And that's like a huge problem because like you said jail this this is not their fault right mental illnesses like are a like behavioral and emotional response to something that's happening in your brain physically right um but that's like this thing that people just don't understand and this pe- this thing that like people never talk about because because of that st- stigma because of that taboo right like people like even in families will like they know that a family member is affected by a mental illness but they never talk about it and sometimes they don't even talk about that person right and that's like that's just a huge problem that we have um just you know you know in Asian countries and all over the world that that I think really needs to be um really talked about more that we need to um bring light to it because like we can't we can't um heal from that we can't really become better in that in that situation yeah. as a community if we don't talk about it more if we don't rep, like you know show people more what it actually is like and that's why we have film <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which is like we everybody's like on like watching something on their screens all the time so it's like such a perfect you know <laughs> method for delivering these messages to people yes that was perfectly said actually that leads to the next question right so what is what was the most challenging aspect but working on a sensitive subject such as suicide and depression and and, and you know, all things mental health related. Uh, is it is it should I start or? Yeah, go, go for it. Uh, I think the most challenging. I, I think it's like for any filmmaker, the challenging thing is uh, the film has to be. I mean, it's a, there there has to be entertainment value that you know it has to be a compelling story and it has to like you know. Uh, make make the audience enjoy their experience but at the same time you know you have to be truthful uh, you have to be honest because especially uh like our film was based on uh, a true story so to be to be respectful to the actual uh, victims families i think that was important for for us and very challenging and like sometimes you know especially in in georgia uh we tried to uh we we didn't try to like there's an expression in korea called shinpa which is like another term for like like very saccharine uh, films like you know you see a lot of like tearjerker films in korea dramas you know like because people like, love to cry here and we didn't want it to turn in, t- turn it into that so i think that was the biggest challenge that we didn't want to uh, ex- like m- exploit uh, the subject matter and manipulate the audience into just just crying over such a tragic event but rather try to uh you know understand what these parents are going through with this unjust and uh you know corrupt legal system in korea in which you know just because you pay a settlement fee you can end up having a lesser uh charge which is uh it's not it's not like explicitly said in the film but if you actually settle if you play pay a settlement fee the crime actually uh, uh, diminishes because uh, it, it, for, for some reason, the judge thinks that the judge thinks that um, you are you're you're more you're you're more apologetic, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. So the most challenging thing I think for making good is that, um, and I say this like in my synopsis, this film is basically a page written out of my diary, and um, I have been very open about the fact that I have grown up with um, anxiety and have had to deal with it for my entire life, but I was never very open about the way that I've had to struggle with depression over the last seven or so years. Um, And it was just, it was so, it was such a raw feeling um, writing it, of course, and like actually seeing it come to life. And um, there was a lot of general nervousness about sharing it with people and you know, being so vulnerable with other people. And so I was very nervous about that. Um, Sorry, hold on. But I think one of the other things, and I think probably the biggest thing was probably, um, man, I hope people, are the people who are watching this, will they have watched the film? (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, just making sure because I want because I don't want to address something and like they're just like, what are you talking about? Um, is that there's like a line about suicide, right? And that was super hard for me to write for a couple of reasons. Um, because well, one is that like the taboo of like suicide and it was also like me openly admitting to the fact that I mean because I wrote it and because I said that it's a part of my diary and like I'm very open about that is like admitting that like I've had these feelings of suicidal ideation right um and that was like super super stressful for me because like one I'm putting myself really out there but also like I wanted to do it in a way that was going to be not stressful for somebody else who was watching it. Um, and so what I ended up doing was like reaching out to Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center um, because they are fantastic people over there. Um, and if you're like an artist who's working on mental health, sorry, plug, random plug, um, and you're trying to figure out how to like sort of tell these stories and you want some help um, making sure that you're doing it in a safe way that's not gonna be triggering for other people or stressful for other people. Um, they were really great about like guiding me in like, writing those words in a way that wasn't going to be like adding to toward the, toward the stigma of um, suicide, um, which was very cool. Um, and maybe I'll share some things that I learned about that later. Um, but yeah, I think that was like one of the biggest things that I struggled with was like even, even including that line about suicide because I didn't want it to be something that was going to harm my audience, make it really stressful for my audience to read. Um, and also because I was very nervous about talking it myself because like, you know, I mean, but I also felt like I had a duty to say it. I had a duty to let people know that I had experienced it. I had a duty to let people know that like, this is a feeling that people can have, right? Because the more we don't talk about it, the more the taboo sticks and then the harder it is for, for us as a community to move forward in prevention. Okay, so the next question is, uh, in a time of uncertainty due to the pan pandemic, do you see your film providing the opportunity to be more comfortable or open to talk about mental health? Uh, I guess I, I, I should start. Uh, to be honest, uh, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I think, I mean, the honest answer is that because, I mean, I, I guess, first of all, it's a short film. I guess some, some people watch it and... Uh, I guess uh, because I mean uh, you know usually when you watch short films you have to go to a film festival and I guess in America now it's like with corona so a lot of people are going to film festivals but in Korea right now like uh, just now people are starting to go and still it's like maybe even like in Busan last year uh, it was like 50 people like they they it's like you know 300 seats but they wouldn't they would only allow 50 people in so because of I think because of the corona pan pandemic uh, because of the pandemic uh, itself, I think it's it's done. I think it's done a lot of damage for cinema and uh, you know, converse, uh, 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 meaningful conversations about mental health. And because people are, you know, uh, cooped up in their houses, I think it's actually really, really done a lot of damage for mental health. Actually, because people can't they couldn't go outside; they had to be indoors. So I think, uh, I don't know, I remember reading an article about like uh, the depression rate increasing because, uh, during the uh, coronavirus pandemic. So I don't think my, my film will be, uh, I guess it's a positive in the sense that any any form of, uh, uh, any piece of art is a positive, but I don't think it, it, it will, it's it's enough. I think after uh, afterwards, you know, when people can go outside and, uh, you know, watch more films about the, the subject matter. I think that, that would be better, if I'm being honest. I hope so. I mean, because the story is very, it's, my, my film is very short. I'm still trying to figure out, like, what, what's going to happen to it after I submit it to other festivals. I don't know if it's, I feel completely comfortable putting it on YouTube, just because it is a very sensitive thing. But at the same time, like, I don't want to hide it because it's a really important topic and a really important subject for people to like, you know, watch and listen to. So I'm still trying to figure that out, but I hope that like the, that with the people who do see it, that it does affect them in a way that makes them feel like seen or heard or like more encouraged to speak up and talk about any kind of struggle that they're experiencing. Thanks guys. So this is the last question before we head into discussion. 
Um, what advice do you have to those struggling with mental health? And the second part would be, what advice do you have for filmmakers wanting to address mental health through film? I guess the, <laughs> the advice I have for people suffering from mental health is uh, uh, don't listen to me. <laughs> you know, don't listen to any, any non-professional. Uh, my advice is I have no advice, but the advice I have to other everyone else is uh, be very uh, be be very accepting and be be very open and learn <laughs> rather than try trying to tell your friend you know false false advice you know I think uh, you know it's especially like in in Asian culture it's it's more of a taboo so um, but the advice I have for filmmakers is is I, I think goes back to one of the earlier questions which is to be very honest very honest with what you know and uh, you know, like Rizal did, is uh, do the research and uh, try to be as honest as possible in the storytelling. So <laughs> my advice for anybody struggling with um, mental illnesses or mental health struggles is the same. If you are struggling with it, if you have access to um, care, if you have access to like a counselor, I encourage you to do it. I am a firm believer that mental health is just like physical health, that you should see a therapist as often as you see a doctor. Um, this is assuming that you see a doctor often, <laughs> um, but like, I really think that therapy is for everybody. You know, there's always something that you as a person can always improve on. And I think that um, if you feel like you're struggling that you should, there are definitely um, resources out there. Um, try and find safe spaces and safe people that you feel like you can talk to and do your best to be open and honest about it. But I also, think that we as a community also have a duty to create help create those safe spaces for other people so like doing your research doing your outreach um you know for example like suicide prevention one of the things that we could be doing is like you know creating safe spaces for the people that we know um taking suicide prevention um trainings like here on guam the guam behavioral health and wellness center sorry is doing a free training that's online and you can totally like just learn some skills and do some practice and like they're just like you know because it's so easy to say to somebody if you need to talk to me about your or you think you're struggling then i'm here right like you can post it on your instagram but it might it seems it might not affect anybody you know like it's so easy to say just reach out to me but it's so much harder to actually do it talking about experiencing suicide is very very hard so it's very hard for somebody who is experiencing it to say to feel safe and say okay hi i'm experiencing this so what we need to be doing as a community is like creating those spaces and like finding ways to reach out to like people that we think might be struggling and like finding ways that we can um sort of like genuinely ask them how they're doing in a way that makes them feel comfortable actually opening up to you right and also like the one thing that i learned from suicide prevention training is that if you think somebody's experiencing suicide, ask them. That sounds really scary, but you have to ask them because the suicide is still a taboo. And as long as we don't talk about it, as long as we don't ask, people are not gonna feel like they can talk about it if they're experiencing it. So like, if there's one thing that you take away from suicide prevention training, if there's one thing that you take away from me, listening to me and don't go to suicide prevention training, it's that you should ask. You, it's, I mean, like, of course, like the onus isn't on you. You shouldn't feel guilty, right? As another person, right? Because um, I know that happens. Like we sometimes feel like we don't do enough, but like there is some, like at, at the end of the day, right? I want you to know that that's something that you can do. Like, it seems scary to ask another person if they're experiencing it, but you can, you can ask. And there are a lot of the times they will tell you because they want to talk about it. They just don't know how. That's it. <laughs> oh my God, like I forgot to say half a day in the beginning. I, I just like to thank the Guam International Film Festival. Uh, I, say, I say this sincerely, uh, very, very, uh, uh, so courteous, so uh, communicative. And, uh, you know, despite the coronavirus and uh, not being able to attend in person, it's been a very, uh, very, very warm welcome and, um, it's been a great experience and I'm thankful to be a part of this film festival and can't wait to submit again in the, in the future. So thank you. And, uh, and, uh,
yeah I, i'm i'm like i'm like looking at Rizal's face and i'm just so <laughs> um yeah it's just a, uh, it looks like a beautiful film festival i'm glad that uh, we're we're able to screen it through a pbs well thank you everybody who watched this panel i'm so bum that we can't do it in person because like as if anybody knows me i have a very very special connection to the guapar after film festival and i was so very looking forward to being able to like you know be there with people and you know you know being able to talk to these uh, talk to everybody about it but thank you so much for watching i really hope that um it uh, you know helps people to open up and think about these things more um i feel like i have a duty to say that if you or somebody you love is struggling there are resources for you uh here on guam we have the guam behavioral health and wellness center <laughs> crisis hotline at 671-647-8833 and then the, the national suicide prevention lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. You know that I've said this a lot, by the way, that I don't even have to look for a reference point. But please, there's always somebody there to, to talk if you need it.